Good morning, folks, and welcome to the seventh episode of Fintech Insider Breakfast Show, a show from the folks from 11 Fast bringing you the breaking news around fintech and banking every single day at 8.30 GMT. The idea is, seeing as we're all going to be cooped up together over the next couple of months, we thought we'd try and start your day off just a little bit brighter. So the show is a mix of 11FS family as well as folks from around the globe who we actually get to talk to because everybody's stuck at home right now. So today I'm absolutely thrilled to be joined by Gavin Ramjuran, who is the presenter and senior BBC news presenter. I mean, Gavin, it's one person I can rely on right now for doing a live <laughs> show, dude. It is, it is you. <laughs> How's it going, my friend? Yes, so very good. Thank you, David. Thanks for having me. You know, this is a great idea, um, great concept, um, and I'm, yeah, privileged to be on. So thank you for having me. And I've been watching a couple of the shows as well every morning. Um, so, yeah, I'll tell you something. It's a weird time, isn't it? Weird situation. Odd vibe. Very odd vibe. Uh, it is very, very strange. Um, before we get into that, I mean, give everybody a bit of a, an overview of your background, because... Um, like I say, I think uh, I think you you would do a much better job of presenting this than I would. But oh uh, no, but... <laughs> not at all, not at all. No, no, no. That's very very kind of you to say. I think you're doing a great job. Um, but um, yeah, thank you. So uh, yeah, just to sort of like blow my own trumpet a bit, I suppose. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm a yeah presenter, news correspondent, anchor uh, for BBC Sport. Um, and yeah, I, I've been at the B for about maybe nine months, ten months now. Um, yeah, it's a real dream job, you know, so I'm very lucky, I'm very privileged to be in this position. I get to um, present sports content um, across uh, a lot of um, outlets for BBC, so BBC News, uh, BBC News Channel, uh, BBC Sport programmes, BBC World. Um, yeah, there's a lot of um, scope to be, um, yeah, across the BBC sort of network, really. And yeah, it's a really lovely team I get to work with as well. So it's, you know, that's that's half the battle, really, having a, a really lovely team to work with. And you get to work across really stimulating content. Um, so, yeah, you know, in terms of like my my background as well, I've been at Sky Sports for probably three and a half years before joining BBC. Um, and again, as an anchor for them and then did, did some did some Sky News, too. So a lot of news coverage, breaking news uh, from the studio primarily. So it's one of those things where you get to, you know, work across con content that's, um, you know, current topical uh, breaking um, uh, and really interesting, really. You know, there's so many things that we've covered the last few years um, to go like you know, back even further. I've been in this industry like maybe 15 years now, 15, 16 years, actually. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I feel like a bit of a veteran, bit an old man in the, in the game, actually. But um... <laughs> well, I mean, every, every time, uh, literally every time I turn on the BBC, dude, I'm uh, I'm sending you a message <laughs> saying, I keep not watching you on TV. This is super cool. <laughs> But um, and you're always Thanks. the guy I'll turn to for, for kind of advice for doing these things. I mean, oh, we've mate. got a, a huge, uh, a huge number of people turning out this morning. Charles, welcome. Good morning. Robin, thanks for joining us from Berlin. Uh, Christina, Raul, Sean, like so many people kind of tuning in to hear on this. Oh, and and uh, obviously, um, you know, Gavin, this is pretty, pretty weird times right now. Um, I mean, news presenters are deemed a key worker, right? So you're you're having to brave this and get out there and get in front of the cameras again. So how, yeah. how is that? I mean, your commute must be a lot quieter right now. Uh, do you know something? That's that's exactly it. The commuting and the, the traveling around. I feel very strange doing it because, you know, the advice, of course, is to to be inside if you don't need to go out for essential travel. Um, and, you know, the, the, the job, as you say, is, uh, is naturally deemed a very important job because you're imparting information to to the public um so yeah it, it's it's a very surreal time you know when you walk out the house and you know you, you, the, the normal journey for me to get to uh the studios in in manchester is um it, it's it's usually quite busy you know it's a very popular route to london to manchester and back again um and the same in london too if you're out and around in london for various studio bits then it's it's you know it's it's empty um and it's it's yeah the commuting is very very surreal very very strange and it's like i remember the other day i was um i was on a virgin train uh, not virgin train sorry the vanti train um and um it was normally they're really busy especially at the times i go as well um you know uh, it's, it's packed but i had the whole thing to myself and i don't think i've ever experienced that it was kind of nice at, at, when you think about it you know, having the luxury of a whole um proper you know fast uh, I've anti-trained yourself, but it just did not feel right. And so, yeah, the sooner we can come out of this, the better. But it's, um, yeah, odd times, odd times. But, yeah, like you say, impart imparting the information is, is very vital. And people are clinging on to every bit they can get to, one, get things started again, get their lifestyles resumed again. Uh, I think the novelty of, of this uh, lockdown, if you like, will wear off fairly soon. 
uh, if it hasn't already. Um, and I think people are itching to get back. So the more info they can get, the more positive news we can bring um, to, to get people back, you know, working again, back, um, you know, into their daily routines again, the better, really. Yeah, I agree. I mean, hopefully uh, a train with nobody in it goes a little bit quicker than one with uh, lots of people in it. So at least your commute was a little bit quicker as well. But uh, I'm, I, so just just I guess the I mean, the thing that you've been I mean, every time I um, I see you, uh, you're involved in sports. I mean, you're not just a, uh, a presenter from a sports perspective. You're a sports fan, aren't you? So. Um, oh, yeah. And this is having such a huge impact on the sporting world, isn't it? I mean, our. Um, you're you're an Arsenal fan, aren't you, Gavin? That's right. Yeah, that's that's right for my sins. Yeah, yeah. This season we've not been um, not been doing too well, but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yeah, the, the sporting world has been absolutely shook. You know, um, it, it's, uh, it's. I just remember when we first started reporting on it, probably about three or four weeks ago now, um, when we were hearing about the the, the virus coming over and uh, leagues in Italy. But first and foremost, were being affected, playing behind closed doors, the Champions League behind closed doors, some games. Um, and then gradually you just started seeing like a domino effect of all these events just falling, 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 falling. And um, the big one, I guess, that we were sort of waiting on uh, was the Olympics a few days, a couple of days ago. Um, and I think it was on Tuesday, wasn't it? So, yeah, the, the Olympics was the big one that I think everybody was like waiting to see what was going to happen with that, because that's not until, you know, late July. And that was a symbolic one because, you know, the Premier League and the football leagues, domestic leagues being halted for the time being was, you know, that's I think that's to be expected because they, you know, average game 40,000 plus, um, you know, that's that's a recipe for passing on the virus. So if you if you look at sort of that in, in the in the you know in the immediate future, that's something that I think nobody can argue with. Mm. Uh, postpone those, get them going whenever this thing clears up. But um, yeah, the Olympics is a symbolic one because uh, it's a, the, the you know biggest event of the last four years. It's the one thing that I think a lot of people were looking forward to. It's the one thing that unites non-sports fans um, to a, an event, to um, you know, to a cause um, rather than uh, you know passionate sports fans. I think the Olympics draws in anyone and everyone, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so that I think, for for from a global perspective, is just the biggest thing that could have happened in the sports world. So um, that going, I think, has has shown just how um, momentous and serious this is, really. So. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a very strange time because, you know, like you say, we go in, we go into work. Normally, we're, we're, you know, absolutely bursting at the seams with stuff that we have to do. And it's really, really manic. There's like lots of people, lots of lots of you know operations going on to, to make the, the network work. Um, and now it's just very skeleton staff. You know, we still have to be there to, to report and to, to you know offer ourselves up to other outlets that need us in the BBC, too. It's not just a case of reporting the, the sports news. It's a case of reporting events based stuff new stuff it's um yeah yeah it's a tough time we've got to all rally together um I mean, so, it's, yeah. it's it's interesting with the the like say with the olympics they they tried to sort of hold off for as long as they could didn't they they very much sort of were adamant that things would sort of go ahead um but i yeah. guess in the i mean in the, the sporting world um you know football has been probably most affected over the last uh, couple of weeks hasn't it you know we've seen um i mean in the last couple of days we've seen people uh, is it all non-league soccer? I know my son's uh, football league has been, you know, essentially sort of cancelled for the rest of the year. I mean, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of organisations that are really going to struggle here. Do you, I mean, question coming in from uh, uh, Robin over in Germany. I mean, do you think soccer clubs can really cope with this lack of income? Because it's it's not just about the the Arsenal's and the Liverpool's. It's it's actually people a lot sort of further down those leagues that are being really impacted, isn't it? Oh, my word. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's a good point. You know, you've got to think about the financials within this. You've got to think about, um, you know, teams that aren't necessarily able to weather the, the, the lack of, you know, ticket revenue, the lack of commercial uh, incoming. So um, teams that in the lower leagues, particularly in like League Two, League One even as well, um, that are reliant on those gate receipts. Um, they are going to struggle. And I think that, you know, with the Chancellor's announcements the last few days and in the last week or so, um, it might help some of the employees, perhaps. Um, but as a business, it's it's difficult because, you know, the outgoings and the things that you have to factor in, it's not just about paying the wages. It's about so many other factors. And I think football's football clubs and particularly sports clubs as businesses um, are, you know, hit by this unprecedented um, virus right now. And it's just something they're going to have to... Um, deal with on the fly because I don't think anything like this has ever happened before. I'm sure we've had, you know, 
well, we've had postponements, we've had weather cancellations, etc. That's nothing compared to this. This is just, you know, a, a complete halt to the season. So um, people are going to have to really think um, strategically and hard about how the businesses they run effectively, you know, the football clubs, the sports clubs, whatever it is, you know, how they're managed and how they how they function. Because, you know, I think everybody's in this in, in this situation together. You know, there's businesses in in the economy that are in a similar fight or flight mode. Um, you know, we hope for the best, but you, you just don't know. We saw Barry go out of uh, out of business this year. Uh, um, there's a lot of clubs at the moment um, struggling to pay wages. Well, not a lot, but a few of them in in the, in the professional league that are yeah. struggling to pay wages. You know, Macclesfield being one of them. Um, and it, it's it's a tough time. You know, it's a tough time. It's like the high street. You know, they were going through tough times anyhow because uh, of um, you know lack of people kind of going to you know to the shops, if you like. And now this has happened. It's it's going to put people on the brink, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I think it's, it's, it's hard. I mean, they, they have um, they have very little options other than cutting salaries to, to reduce their costs, don't they? But uh, oh, I mean, the, yeah. the only uh, the only benefit I can see potentially through all of this uh, with Corona is you'll notice over my shoulder here. I'm a Norwich I just City saw it. Fan. Yeah, so, I just saw it. So I, I, like the the only benefit might be that Norwich doesn't get relegated. But uh, <laughs> I mean, what, what do you think will happen there then? Because I mean, obviously, I mean, at the top of the league, of the Premier League right now, you know, Liverpool have been absolutely smashing it, haven't they? You know, they're yeah. so far above. For those guys to not be awarded the, the 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 title this year, I think would just be an absolute travesty. You know, do you, do you where do you think that will land? Oh goodness me! I mean, that that is, I think, anybody's guess right now. Um, uh, yeah, whether they finish the season off and just put an asterisk by Liverpool's name, I mean, who knows? I mean, it's it's. They, they are adamant about getting the league played. Um, you know, they have said that and they've said right now, you know, April, the end of April is the is the resumption date potentially if it, you know, all being well. Um, and, I, I, you know, you've got to feel for the championship clubs as well who are trying to, to, get, it, to get into the Premier League and they're you know, potentially going to you know, take legal action if they can't do that. Um, but it, it's a it's a very, you know, fluid time i think and i think everybody's monitoring how this um this coronavirus uh covid19 situation is unfolding because they are planning what they are potentially going to do for the next season and when that season is who knows it could be back into the end of you know autumn of this year it could be the winter this year i mean this it's this is just not not like anything seen before it's um you know i'm pretty i'm pretty confident they'll get the league done um you know there's a lot of talk about playing two, three games a week if they have to, to get it done. And I, I can't remember exactly at the top of my head how many games are left. It's about nine games, I think, left. But um, uh, it, it, in the Prem, that is. I just feel like, uh, you know, that, that, that there's a will to make these games uh, happen. And whatever it takes to make that happen, I think they will do that. Because um, for the fans, for the, for the, for the broadcasters, for, for everybody who deserves a season, um, whose team, you know, they've got vested interests in their team. You know, you don't want to see Norwich go down. I want to see Arsenal get in the Champions League if that's possible. Probably not, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we we can all dream of something, can't we? At some point, but uh... exactly, yeah. I mean, everyone's got a vested interest in it. And I think that um, it would be fair for the fans to finish the league, um, and it would be fair for Liverpool fans to to have that trophy after thirty years, really. So I think mm. they would, um, yeah, there would be a there would be absolutely, you know, there would be pandemonium if they didn't get that trophy. I think, and Agreed. you know. Yeah, I, I think they deserve it as well. No, you can't argue really with with that because they've just been phenomenal this year. They, they didn't go the season unbeaten anyway. So it's true. That's the one it's true. <laughs> um, so a good good point from uh, Valentina Christensen from Oak North saying actually there's also postponed sponsorship value to consider. So Starling Bank, one of the challenge banks, uh, one of the sponsors of uh, GB uh, Olympics. So on the one hand, sponsorship value is actually prolonged for those guys. So there is some benefits there. You know, the, the sort of association with them for a long time is uh, is, is there. I mean, so you're you're a uh, you're an Arsenal fan, but I mean, I, I saw some of your handiwork on Twitter yesterday, <laughs> trying to do the uh, the uh, coronavirus challenge with the the. If you if anybody oh. hasn't seen it, the challenge <laughs> is to take a toilet roll and be able to do keepy uppies and then kick it into a, a basket. Um, it took a few attempts, Gavin, didn't it? I'm not going to lie. Yeah, oh, I, I didn't do it. <laughs> she didn't do it. I tried it. I tried... Do you know how long that took me to do? The, the thing I posted was um, uh, it was actually a um, it was actually a, a, a video that I was recording for about 25 minutes trying to do it, and I thought, oh my god, I'm sweating here, I'm sweating buckets, <laughs> trying to do this stupid stay-at-home challenge. And I'm thinking, oh well, you know what? 
everyone's doing it let's try and put a bit of a lighter spin on things and yeah i mean it's um i balanced a bin i was just going to technicals i balanced a bin on like a bit of a, a, a vase i've got and i thought right i'm gonna try and like keep it up and then just like volley it in <laughs> and um yeah it just i couldn't do it basically i, I got i got the hang of the, the, the keepy uppies but it's yeah. the volleying in thing that i struggled with it's uh, it was it always sounds like it's going to go really well in your head, doesn't it? And then, yeah, uh, I know. I know. But um, I mean, if for anybody who hasn't uh, who doesn't follow you on Twitter or Instagram, like you, you are. Uh, I mean, I, I came off Instagram in January to focus on sort of LinkedIn and Twitter. But yeah. the only thing I miss from Instagram is your account because you're just oh. so funny. <laughs> Like you're <laughs> like honestly, you're the documenting your days, the things that's going on. So I mean, what what's the stuff? I, I mean, for for anybody who doesn't follow you, you, just give give them that's... your account now when when we yeah. sign off, and then you can entertain yourself. So what's your what's your Instagram and Twitter? Oh, that's very kind of you. I'm Gavin R official. Thank you, David. Um, Gavin R official. Um, and uh, Facebook Gavin R official as well. Um, but yeah, it's that's very kind of you. I think. I think I just sort of like got into the flow of like just posting stuff as and what and when I'm doing things, and you know a lot of my friends do it as well, and a lot of the you know a lot of the a lot of the industries doing it now, and I sort of got caught up in it, and I thought, all oh, right, well, let's see what um let's see what we can do with it, and I just sort of like try I just try and just sort of be me on it really, if that makes sense, and um yeah, it's, it uh, does which, um it comes across really just authentically and fun. Oh. Uh, I think people who don't take themselves too seriously online are the absolute best, which is which is good. I mean, so oh. I, and and I and I guess it's not just um, kicking toilet rolls into to baskets, but I mean, how how are you keeping yourself entertained right now? Because oh. you know, dealing with um, isolation, I, I watched uh, the the video that you put out on YouTube about managing mental health in these these t troubled times, because you know a lot of people are. Um, cont very much contained and potentially on their own as well. So, I mean, how how are you dealing with this? Because it's um, it's pretty pretty difficult, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, it's, it's very um, thank, uh, kind of you to watch that. And um, yeah, I just I did that. I just felt one day. I, I think it was uh, end of last week. Um, I just had this sort of vibe that a lot of people were, um, you know, going to be struggling. If they're not struggling now, at some point they will think, you know, what I am really really feeling like down here about this. And I just figured that um, it was something to do. And I figured that it was something to kind of like hopefully try and, you know, inspire people to try and think positively about stuff. Mm. Um, and it's, it's one of those uh, situations where because no one's ever been through this before, it's difficult to know what the end is like. And so you can't actually, whatever you say, whatever you do, it's, it, it may just fall on deaf ears because people, you know, I, I for one, I, I don't have the answers. No one has the answers. It's It's one of those... Um, things where I just think that you've got to try and see the positives and try and make use of the time and the productivity in this period, in this um, period where we aren't working as normal to, to maybe do something different or to, you know, finish the, the jobs around the house or to, to put a new project in place where you can work on it now and maybe um, get it going when things start to, to pick up again. Mm. Um, it's really important to make use of the time, I think. The time Time management is so important in these situations because... Yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of downtime now, if you like. But um, at some point, the downtime won't be there again. And so, making use of that in your head to think, actually, what do I need to achieve? What do I need to do? Um, potentially, can help with a lot of mental health. And I think that for me right now, feeling uh, like that, I feel very positive about it. But having said that, I am also still working too. So it's um, I, again, I'm in a funny situation where I still am I'm needed for for my for my work. Um, but it's it, um, it's interesting the amount of um, I mean the amount of people that I've I've spoken to have said. I've kind of reconnected with a bunch of people that I just haven't spoken to for ages. You know, yeah. uh, FaceTime friends you haven't spoken to for a long time. You know, make sure you you really jump on things and, uh, you know, like exactly like you say, make the most of it. I mean, I, I did some gardening at the weekend. I've been putting off for at least a year, you know, like so. So actually all of these things that people can do to sort of stay productive, you know. Um, a comment on the um, on, on uh, LinkedIn now by a couple of people, actually. Um, so uh, Sean O'Keefe, do you think this is going to be escalating for the rise in popularity of esports because arguably right now esports you know you, you don't catch anything by uh, playing xbox right so uh, this is quite a, a a good opportunity for those guys to really step into the mainstream that's a really good point that's a very good point a lot of people have um have spoken about that um i think esports have always they've got their own sort of niche haven't they you know esports i've i've been i've been fascinated by esports for a few years now um and you know, i remember seeing the rise in it and i remember seeing when tournaments started becoming monetized and um i just remember thinking actually could this be a thing could this be something that becomes um a you know a concept that is 
talked about in in the sort of natural way that football or you know American football or whatever sport is uh, that you follow it is that you follow could be like a kind of you know could it be a thing that it becomes popular culture and yeah I, I saw that Sky were were streaming the uh, their F1 esports competition recently in place of the regular F1 which should be happening right now um, and I do I do think that it could it's got an opportunity to to make a mark but what you find I think with esports is you get people who watch it and you think oh, this is just kids playing computer games. Um, or, you know, it's like, oh, they're just playing a video game. I could just do this in my own time and, like, save, you know, I could get just the right, the same amount of thrill playing it than watching it. So I, I do think there's a, there's a, there is a bit of a stereotype around it like that. But having said that, it's fascinating how popular it is becoming because it is, you know, it's a genuine industry. It's something that is only growing um, and it's becoming, it's growing in different parts of the world. Which means that it eventually picks up in you know here and, and and in other parts of the globe where it's not as necessarily as big. It's not necessarily as big. So I think that um, it's definitely something to take seriously. Whether it becomes something in this period that you know jumps up and takes over the sports, I don't know. I don't think so. But um, it's certainly something to think about for entertaining an audience. And right now, an audience needs entertaining. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? I mean, the most of sports. Um, maybe not being a Norwich fan this year, but uh, most of most of sport is coming together and feeling sort of a shared passion for something, isn't it? Mm. And actually, when you sort of re- we're all in a situation where we we can't really come together to share that passion, it becomes it becomes really quite difficult to to sort of have the same things. I mean, if you've ever watched a um, you know a football on the TV when it's behind closed doors, just the atmosphere oh. is just not the same, you know. Oh no, it's weird. It's weird. It's absolutely. It's really strange, and it's like. Um, I guess it's like TV shows that happen behind closed doors as well. I saw a few of them recently where there's no audience and it's just like, oh, OK, um, this just doesn't feel right. And it's the mm. same with football. It just, just doesn't feel right. And I think you understand it when the players like I think uh, LeBron James said it a while ago when when the Lakers were talking about playing behind closed doors. Obviously, that's, you know, that's uh, that, that option's not even there now. But um, he was saying that he didn't want to do it. And it's just like I get it because the fan, it's all about the fans, isn't it? The fans want to be entertained. The fans will watch. Uh, an atmosphere if they're watching via TV or whatever medium. Mm. Um, so it's like you've kind of got to do it for the fans. And I, it's, yeah, you need that common that commonality. And if the atmosphere is not there, it's the, the experience isn't the same. Yeah, really some really good, uh, good good suggestions on the, on the chatter again is, uh, I mean, local drone racing. That would yeah. be amazing. You can, you can stay your, your distance and <laughs> let, let the drones do the job. I mean, it's, it's interesting because, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've played a lot of computer games as I've sort of grown up and actually, you know, I find people will, um, you know, definitely people kind of think it's just, well, everybody can do that. But actually, if you've ever come up against a, an amazing FIFA player, you get oh. destroyed. You know, you get yeah. absolutely destroyed. So, I mean, I yeah, think yeah. skills are skills. Like, if you if you can um, if you can be better at something or worse at something, then actually you can turn it into a sport. Essentially. So. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I've played a lot of um, I've played a bit of esports as well. Well, actually, I should probably um, yeah, I don't mind admitting to this. I used to play a lot of pro evolution soccer. Nice. Uh, which is the competitor to, to FIFA. Um, it's now eFootball as it is uh, in the gaming world. So, um, yeah, but I used to have a bit of a ranking on that. I used to be all right. <laughs> wow. So, uh, I'm, are you, I'm are you still, game, David, so you still playing? Yeah. Are you playing? Yeah. Are, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. are you <laughs> an Xbox or a PlayStation man? Uh, well, I'm more of a PlayStation guy, but um, I play on my phone a lot of the time, which is okay. probably, yeah, because it means I could just put it down and then just carry on and do something else if I need to do something actually constructive if I, I see it as. But I just, every now and again, you need a bit of a break, don't you? So, you're just like, ah. Give someone yeah. a whooping on online on on, on Pro Evo. Why not? <laughs> Sounds good. Well, I think we probably need to sort that out. I think uh, in the next uh, <laughs> in the next couple of weeks we can get that. And actually, I mean, from a streaming perspective, let's get Twitch up. Let's get get yeah. rolling on that. So, but uh, yeah. what? Um, so, what would be? Your, I, I think. Um, have you got any advice for anybody who's sort of stuck out there right now? What would be your advice to try and stay sane in the next uh, in the next couple of weeks? Because uh, I think. Um, from from our best guess, I think we're in a situation where this is going to be three months of working from home in this way. So uh, yeah. they're going to have to get used to putting up with me for a little bit every morning. But um, <laughs> what else can uh, what else can ease the stress for them? Do you think? Oh, it's, uh, you know what? Um, well, having you every morning, man, I'll tell you something. That's cool. You know, I like it. I like it. I like it. I get my LinkedIn notification, and I'm like, yeah, let's watch a bit of David. You know, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, definitely. But I think. Um, the uh, you know what it, it's it's tough because it like like we were saying just just now it's you don't know the end date do you, you don't know when it's going to finish you don't know when it's going to end and it's like you don't know when it's going to you know you don't know where the light at the end of the tunnel is basically so yeah. um, I feel like uh, the best thing to do the best advice is um, you know make the time to talk to people again you know, I've been doing a lot of like live stream conversations with my friends who 
I wouldn't necessarily talk to during the week or during like, you know, we, we, we meet up regularly uh, every, every couple of months or so, maybe every three months. But um, yeah, making the time to talk and see your friends, talk to people that you don't normally talk to, um, do things that you, you, you've been putting off. Like I've got a massive to-do list. I'm going to try and crack through that. Um, I just feel like it's an opportunity to get things done that you haven't had the chance to, or that you've been putting off. Like I'm, I'm, I'm launching a new online, or I've launched, I've launched a new online um, men's portal called Manzilla. It's a men's focused news platform, and I'm getting loads of bits and bobs done for that. The editing of films that we've done for our podcasts, uh, which you have to come on, by the way, David. You have to come on it. Um, and anyway, definitely. Watching, I mean, I've li- I yeah. listened to it. The podcast is awesome. Uh, oh, definitely, thank anybody you. who's uh, watching this now, check out Manzilla. It's super, super oh. cool. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. And anyone who's interested in it as well, do shout us a DM or whatever. And um, yeah, hopefully we can uh, do some collabs on it, but that'd be great. Um, yeah. So just getting bits done like that, you know, things that I've been not had a chance to properly do, I can actually work on. Um, productivity, I feel for me right now is, and I think for anyone listening as well and watching is something that is, you know, it's so important to us and, you know, procrastination and, and distractions in this world are just everywhere. And right now the distractions are at an all time low. So whilst it is a stressful and tough time if you can manage your productivity and manage your um uh your your kind of your to-do list and your your schedule to make things work for you and feel at the end of the day it's like a win you know you've done stuff that you wouldn't have done on a normal day then i think that's the best way to look at it because it's about the marginal gains and the marginal gains get you places you know as we've seen from from sports teams you know it's the marginal gains if you can make you can you can make those happen then you're only going to come out of this in a better place because there isn't anything you can do. There isn't anything anyone can do right now apart from heed the government advice. 100%. Uh, yeah, I mean, all of those excuses have definitely fallen away, haven't they? And yeah. a couple of great uh, comments here. So uh, Natalia says, don't feel bad, Gavin. I played a lot of League of Legends and watched a lot of tournaments, so don't feel too bad on that one. And okay. then probably one to leave off on this is uh, David Blackman uh, from Google, actually. Uh, in a strange way... Whilst it's the most difficult times, the BBC and the NHS, which are both doing an incredible job, have been rightly positioned as national icons. Feels like the focus on key services will ensure increasing funding moving forwards. The BBC do BBC are doing an amazing job. So well done, Gavin. Thanks for everything you're oh. doing. Thanks for putting yourself out there on the front line and kind of getting out there and reporting the news. Uh, we super, super, super appreciate it. That's oh, no, thank you. Probably all the time we've got. It's kind of coming to the top of the hour, so everybody's got uh, jobs to go get on with. So um, for anybody who wants to kind of follow you and keep up with you, Gavin, where can people find out more about you? Thank you very much, David. Um, it is uh, at Gavin R Official, my social handles, um, GavinRamjean.com, my website, really. Those are the best places. And then Manzilla, which is the men's platform. Uh, the website's been built for that at the moment. Any tips greatly received. Uh, that is Man man zilla.com and that is at manzilla online on the socials so yeah but that's Fantastic. that's the best way really i'd say Fantastic. Sure. yeah or, or just turn on your tv and flick on to <laughs> bbc news right now so uh, <laughs> right folks that's all we have time for today have a great day everybody stay safe and see you tomorrow morning thanks very much see you later